Today, I'm going to show you exactly why. I do not recommend you buy an Isuzu D-Max or an MUX, and it's got very little to do with the vehicles themselves and everything to do with the caliber of the parent organization, which in my estimation is very likely to throw you under the bus if you present to them with a legitimate problem which they can weasel out of. And I'm not just gonna speculate on this, okay? I am gonna show you an actual example that lobbed unsolicited in my inbox today. Dudes, Isuzu in just a second, but first, a public service announcement. See, I get a lot of emails from dudes like me, like you might be like me, you might be pushing 60 and you might be saying, I need a medium SUV, I gotta stop getting down into that car, I just can't get down and get back if I got a bung knee or I got a bad back or any number of variations on this theme. It's actually quite hard to do a bunch of pull-ups. However, I'm here to tell you that you can be pushing 60 and a slob and in, you know, reasonable shape so that you can do normal things in life, you know, pick stuff off of the floor and put it up there and carry the grandkids and lift them into the car and stuff like that. So, dude, if you are saying to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm getting old and it's inevitable. It's not, dude. Like, if you've got multiple sclerosis or you've been hit by a bus, <laughs> different story, okay? But if you are reasonably healthy and all of this stuff is getting to you, the sore knee, the sore back, the sore shoulder, whatever, it's time to face facts. It's not getting old, it's being a slob. <laughs> so, if you're pushing 60, like me, and you're not doing strength endurance training, you are setting yourself up for the biggest possible physical disaster in the next 20 years, which would be losing your strength. And if you lose your strength, you lose everything. So this is not inevitable, what you're feeling, all right? It's just not. Three years ago, I couldn't do a single pull-up, right? I was so disgusted with myself. I made it my mission to be a slob in shape, in reasonable shape. like not going to the Olympics anytime soon, but I get all of these emails and I just wanted to put it out there that if that's you, there is no excuse called getting older, right? If you're in reasonable health, you should be able to function in the world, which means you should be able to get down into a car and sit there for a couple of hours and get back out and carry the grandkids, do whatever, okay? Anywho, rocking the dome today too, different setup in the fat cave and Let's go now with an email I got today from Daryl Imray, right? And this is just emblematic of the way Isuzu rolls in Australia. Daz has got a problem, dealership tried to help, Isuzu throws him under the bus. Let's look at the anatomy of that. Daz goes, we recently had a 120K major service completed at the dealership for 1600 bucks as we have all our services with no issues. Then just recently, a warning light would appear, intermittently putting the car into limp mode. The dealership discovered a faulty injector pump and electrical fault. So this is a 2016 car, okay? And it was purchased new by Dazza. It's gone in for 120K service, but it's six years old. So it's out of warranty, but that's not the end of the story. He goes, the price quoted to repair this as the car is now outside of warranty by 13 months, is four grand for the part. Like, <laughs> come on, dude. The whole car was only 40 or 50 grand. How can a single pump be worth four grand? You've gotta be kidding. That's a bend over with no reach around right there. Plus 850 bucks labor. That's probably reasonable. Anyway, Dazzler goes, I found that excessive and contacted Isuzu head office. <laughs> Good luck with that. As a two-parent working-class family, coughing up five grand to keep our family going was very disappointing. 
And the Academy Award for Understatement of the Year goes to Dazza Imray. Well done, dude, for composure and politeness. I don't know how you manage that. The Ford dealership at Kingswood, which I'm assuming is also the Isuzu dealer, advised us that even though our service history with them and the car was exemplary, so not only, not only is Dazza looking for a hand here, but he is doing everything in good faith with the dealer having an exemplary service history, right? So let's just put all of these pegs in the ground like this is the state of play. It's not like he's missed three services and the car shat itself and now he's demanding support, okay, is what I'm saying. Isuzu and the dealership said that Isuzu were, quote, difficult to deal with and gave very little due to the size of the company. So we're looking for a good faith, whatever that is. I will forward you their emailed response, but I am not surprised these days. Kind regards, Daryl Imray. All right, so let's just talk about the state of play here and I'll then go into the emailed response, which I will also put up on the screen so that you know I'm just not manufacturing this and bullshitting to you in some sort of amplified way. I've got this email from them and this is how they roll. So let's think about good faith for a minute, see? In 2011, on the 1st of January 2011, consumer law in Australia changed and it was no longer the case that manufacturers, importers, whatever, had the sole discretion of helping you out in good faith. That disappeared roughly 12 years ago now and there's simply no excuse for anyone in this country not knowing exactly how consumer law works because Warranty is not the end of the story and consumer law protects you irrespective of the vehicle's warranty status. We'll get into that in a bit more detail in just a second, right? But Dazza has done all of the right things here. He's had the car serviced on time, exemplary service history. The dealer has gone to bat with him, with Isuzu Australia. And here's what they said. And I'll put the response, the full email. I'll just take a screenshot and put it up on the screen now so that you know I am not bullshitting you. This is from the Isuzu Ute Australia customer relations team. And they say, Dear Daryl, thank you for contacting Isuzu Ute Australia and for your time on the phone as well. We first clarify. The Isuzu new vehicle warranty covers repairs to correct any malfunctions occurring during the warranty period resulting from defects in material or workmanship of the vehicle. To be considered under the warranty policy, Isuzu Ute Australia must be put on notice by a consumer whilst it is within the new vehicle warranty period. So they're just pretending consumer law doesn't exist and they're throwing Dazza under the bus based on warranty. How fucking convenient. Your vehicle, VIN code blah blah blah, came with manufacturer's warranty of five years, 130,000 kilometres, whichever occurs first, and the expiry date was the 24th of August 2021. So that was 13 months ago, right? As you are aware, by the time your vehicle was presented to Sinclair Isuzu Ute for the fuel pump concern, the warranty period had already elapsed by over 12 months. Here's the chuck under the bus, right? Your request for assistance with the required repair has been discussed with management, <laughs> management in a cap M, like how fucking grandiose. However, Isuzu Ute Australia are unable to facilitate your request. We're unable. <laughs> We've decided not to, is what they mean. Isuzu Ute Australia acknowledges your disappointment. Well, that's fantastic, but you can't put a dollar figure on that, can you? that this concern has arisen outside of the manufacturer's warranty period and with the decision that has been made, we are sorry we have been unable to deliver your desired outcome, kind regards. They're not unable to deliver this, right? They could deliver that at the drop of a fucking hat. They've taken the decision not to. And the thing that galls me about this, it's so disgusting, unethical, immoral, etc is that they're pretending consumer law doesn't exist and they're hoping nobody notices, right? Because under consumer law, it doesn't matter what the warranty is. There is a legislated requirement of reasonable durability and reasonable is up to the court to decide and it's different if you buy a five buck tennis ball or a $50,000 ute, 
okay? That just makes sense, okay? There's different durability expectations in the mind of a reasonable consumer for a rubber ball that costs five bucks or a machine that is advertised to you as having truck-like dependability that fails at 120,000 Ks in six years, catastrophically, incidentally, with a massive bill that you can't jump over in the current environment of cost pressures and family life, etc. This is serious shit for ordinary people owning cars, and I'm sure that's something that the senior executive management of every car company cannot relate to because those mother lovers never buy a car. They haven't bought a car for years. They don't understand the breadth of financial commitment that it takes to get 50 grand and go, here it is, give me that car and please look after me kind of thing. Because to them, a car is just something that the parking lot is full of and they take home you know, whatever car they want at any friggin' time. It's just how they roll. Senior management of all car companies cannot appreciate what you're going through with car ownership because they don't own a car. It's almost like being a motoring journalist, right? Anywho, reasonable durability under the legislation for a car is probably 10 years and something between 160 and 200,000 kilometres. And of course, it requires you not to abuse the vehicle or neglect it by failing to get it serviced. If you do that, then yeah, we're not gonna help you kind of thing but there is a legislated requirement of all car makers and the manufacturers of everything else to provide you with warranty-like support if the failure happens unreasonably prematurely. And that, in my estimation, is what happens here. Like, dude, if you put a four-inch lift and dirty big 35-inch tyres on your ute and then something breaks, like you break a drive shaft or the ball joints just keep chewing themselves out, whatever, that's on you, okay? Because you have modified the car and in the car maker's mind, that's abuse and it's not covered. It's not covered under warranty either, frankly. But I, for the life of me, cannot see a single way that the user of a vehicle can impact the durability of the fuel pump. And certainly nothing of that nature has been presented in Isuzu's response or Daryl's claim of, what the dealer has said to him. They've said, you've got a reasonable claim, we'll take it up with them. And, and Isuzu Ute Australia has very politely said, fuck off, right? And I call on a couple of things here. I really do call on the senior management of Isuzu Ute Australia to wake up and acknowledge the existence of consumer law and support customers within a reasonable durability envelope with warranty-like support. And in fact, you should roll out of bed and be gagging to do this because it's such cheap marketing. Because instead of reaching out to me and have me amplify this message through the high-tech miracle of YouTube, Daryl would instead be the world's biggest unpaid ambassador for Isuzu if he just got looked after. And let's not forget, it doesn't cost four grand for the part for Isuzu. They can stump up the part for what it really costs, which is probably less than a thousand bucks. And they don't even have to pay the full freight for the labour to get the dealership to fit it because they all car makers have this discount labour rate arrangement with all dealers for warranty and consumer law kind of repairs, right? They don't pay the warranty rate that you pay when you get your car fixed, that's for sure, okay? So... They're missing this opportunity, behaving unethically and immorally and undermining their multi-million dollar marketing of their bullshit myth of truck-like dependability, which, you know, quad error demonstrandum, baby, it doesn't exist. It's a myth. It's just something you can buy if you spend enough on advertising, right? What good is having legislation preventing murder or penalising murder on the books if the cops don't go out and find murderers. And that's exactly what's happening here with the ACCC, right? They're not going to go out for Dazza because they don't act for individuals, but companies need to be afraid of not complying with consumer law off the bat, right? Because there's already an asymmetry of power in play here, isn't there? Like, Dazza doesn't have the resources of Isuzu Ute Australia. So they can fuck him over all the way to consumer court and back. And 
Daz's legal costs could be expensive and it could easily cost him more than five grand to get there. And that's a disincentive to not saying, oh, fuck it, I'll just get the car fixed, okay? And we don't want that sort of situation. We want the company to be shit scared of getting penalised for not doing the right thing off the bat because that's what the legislation requires. Like, Daryl has respectfully asked for support here on the phone and by email, they've said fuck off and on the balance of probability, not being a lawyer, but on the balance of probability, this is a violation of Australian consumer law. I've seen so many car maker emails like this, like cars out of warranty, so sorry, we're unable to help. They're not unable to help. They're trying to be cocks and disobey the law and hoping they get away with it. That's certainly how it seems to me. Hashtag not a lawyer. But the reason I'm telling you about this is because plenty of people are sucked into the myth of marketing. Toyota talks about it's unbreakable this and that, you know, and Isuzu talks about it's truck-like dependability. But if you had a truck, you'd get to 120,000 Ks pretty quick. And if the injector pump failed, you'd be cranky. You really would. And you would look to them to support you under Australian consumer law. And I don't know if the truck division would. I've never had any dealings with them. I'm not a truck dude. But I know how the ute division rolls and it's disgraceful, right? The vehicles themselves are okay. You know, they're okay. But if you can... You can't separate yourself from the car maker, right? You can't separate the car from the car maker because when you've got a legitimate concern, the car maker needs to support you to get the car back together. So whether you like it or not, it's almost like having, you know, you know you're married. I know I've been married six times, but you're married. You can't separate the marriage from the in-laws, right? You just can't do that. So this is like the in-laws being consummate bastards and you've got to catch up with them now and again in uh, unpalatable ways and they always make you feel like shit. So I'd suggest that Isuzu needs to get its act together because is 12 years not enough to figure out how the law really works?